show you how to get your model, your 3D finished project from SketchUp into Flash Print, which is our 3D printing software. So uh, this is steps you can follow along. First thing you need to do is obviously open up your SketchUp model. And ideally what we're looking for here is we're looking for your model to be completed. We want it to be set up as solids, ideally components, so it shouldn't be a 2D drawing, it needs to be a 3D drawing. Ideally it's made using components, not just using simple push-pulls. And it doesn't need to be rendered, so it doesn't need to have all the uh, wood textures on it at this point, because a 3D printer is only printing shape, it's not printing color. So you've got your model sorted, and from here, you now need to go file menu, and we are exporting as STL. Now, when we're setting our export options, uh, we wanna make sure your settings are what you can see on my screen. So there is no tick box next to export selected geometry only. The model units are being used. So um, you don't need to make any changes there. And in terms of file format, we're sticking with ASCII, not binary. So sticking with the options that are there, that should be what comes up by default and click export. Now what this process is doing is saving your SketchUp file, which is a .skp file and resaving it as an STL, so .stl format. This is the format needed for that software. I recommend for this purpose, save it to your desktop and just give it the name of your project. So mine is a folding lap desk, .stl. Press the save button. If you've already got one there, it'll ask you to replace it. Just make sure STL. Um, for me, yes, I'm gonna say replace and we're done. From here, I can shut SketchUp. It's no longer needed for this part of the process. Next thing I need to do is in my applications, I need to open up Flash Print. Flash Print is the 3D printing software. When I open it up, there may be some messages, alerts, and things like that. You can ignore any alerts that come up, except for alerts around updating. If there are updates available, I would recommend that you follow along with those updates. Now we're in Flash Print, which is a 3D printing software. You can see there is this cube shape on my screen, which is completely empty. It's just a shell. That shows you the physical size of the 3D printer uh, bed. So where you could actually print your project inside of the 3D printer. So it just gives you a bit of an idea of what the limits are in terms of height, depth, and width. So just a blank canvas here. Even though you can see those lines, they don't print. You're now ready to load in your project. So in the top center are your main three buttons you'll be using. The load is the first of the buttons. You load your project by navigating to your desktop scrolling down till you find your STL file, select open, and it will load into the project. It'll come up with some different options there, but my initial option that comes up here is that this model is sitting off the platform and do I wanna put it on the platform? And the answer here is always yes, you do wanna put it on the platform. Occasionally, there might be errors in your SketchUp model. It will work on SketchUp, but not work as a 3D print file. So this software also has some built-in repair features. So you would click repair. Hopefully it's able to repair your model and you can move on. If you click repair and it is unable to repair your model, then you need to go back to SketchUp and actually work on redesigning your project because there is something fundamentally wrong with the way you've drawn it. And if you're really struggling, send me a copy of your file and I'll have a look and see what I can work out. Now my screen, I've loaded it in, but we can't see anything. And that's because we're zoomed in too far. So if you use scroll up, scroll up is your zoom out, scroll down zooms in for you. You can see that my project is physically too big to fit up there inside of my 3D printer. So I need to scale it down to make it fit. So I go over to my modify features over on the left hand side and click on scale. When I click on scale, it will open up this sub menu. The most important part here is to make sure that we have the uniform scaling ticked. This way I can press the down or the up button and it will scale both the X, the Y and also the Z axes all at the same time. Now there's no exact percentage that you need to use here, but you need to make sure your project fits inside of these, the cube. You might be able to see that I've got these red shaded areas uh, on the outside of my 3D printing cube. That's indicating that my project is outside of the lines. When I go down to the right side, you'll see those red shaded areas disappear which now means my project fits inside the printer. You then just need to remember which scale setting you used. If it's 20%, if it's 25%, if it's 17.5%, doesn't matter which percentage you use. 
but you need to make sure you remember what scale you've you've actually selected here so that you can put that on the label of your 3D printed model when it comes to hand in time. So just remember to note down that scale would be a good idea to take a screenshot here to put in your folio as part of your production process. We are then ready to uh, move on to printing. Once it fits inside the printer, we can then start printing. The other thing that you can keep in mind is that you do have the options to rotate. Now, I don't necessarily need to rotate mine here, but I'm going to show you what you can do. And you can, using the rotate tool, you can rotate on the green axes, you can rotate on the red axes, just by clicking on those axes and dragging them around, and also on the blue. You can do whatever rotations are needed. Your goal here is to make the project sitting flat on the platform is the most important thing. So I'm just going to put my project back where it belongs. Okay, so reset it back to where it belongs. And what you can do is you can actually say, I wanna go plus 90 or minus 90, plus 90, minus 90, plus 90, minus 90, just to play with some of the different options that exist. For a project like this, it's probably easier to print it on its side um, so that we don't have to put all of the supports underneath, um, but I'll show you what I mean by supports. Supports is the next of the main buttons. So we go through and we would always be using auto supports. You'll see that it adds these green little tree-like structures in. These are, these are designed specifically to hold up the 3D printed parts so they don't drip down while they're drying. So particularly if you've got parts of your drawing that are just needing to be suspended in air, that doesn't work in a 3D printer. So you need these tree supports. So auto supports will do that for you. Have a look at how many supports I've got when my project is rotated in this model. And then compare it to if I make a rotation, okay, if I make a rotation, so let's just clear my supports. I'm going to go back, make some rotations here. I'm going to put my project back where it was originally. So in this upside uh, correct method, click on auto supports and have a look at the number of supports that are needed this time. So it's an enormously larger number of supports, which means more 3D printing material and more time to print. Let's compare that again now to if I go back and rotate my project just this way, so that's sitting upside down on the project. Let's compare now the auto supports and you'll see it's less again. So you need to have a play around with the rotation and support features to see which minimizes the amount of supports because that's gonna maximize the printing time. Once you're happy, you can click on the back button. You've got your supports, you've got your model in. We're now ready to print. When we move across to the print, it asks us for some options. We're going to go with preview. That's because we don't have the 3D printers in front of us. The machine type that we've got selected is the Flash Forge Inventor 2 series. The material that we use is PLA. Supports are enabled. Raft is disabled. Resolution is standard. And then I click OK. It will say to me, hey, we actually suggest that you put a raft on or a brim. Would you like to do that? And you can decide which you want to do. Um, I will simply click add raft. That's the most safe option. And it prints your project just sitting on top of an extra platform. Um, gives you a bit of an idea there. You can now see that this is ready to be printed. It's got my model with the raft, with the supports. And over here in the top right, it tells me the estimated print time is three hours and 39 minutes. And it's going to use approximately 14 and 79 meters of printing material. I now take my screenshot, command, control, shift four, puts me in screenshot mode. I take a screenshot of my screen, making sure to include both the model and the estimate printing time and the model of the printer, which is down at the bottom there. And I'm now ready to paste that into my folio underneath the prototyping component. So that's ready to go there. Last thing that I want you to do is I also want you to export G code. Now that's the, that's a 3D printing file. It's in a GX format. Click on name it, save it to your desktop and click save. And then that's the file that you need to email to me so that I can put it in the 3D printer uh, and organize for it to be printed as soon as we return to school. So that's the end of the 3D printing prototyping tutorial. If you've got any questions, please go back um, and rewatch the video or send me an email if you still can't find the answers. Thank you.